Hi folks, before we begin, please be aware that we are recording this webinar. If you have any questions about the resources, we encourage you to follow up via email at support at electionsgroup.com. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Annie and I'm an election expert with the Elections Group. Everyone, I'm Rebecca. I'm the Communications and Program Manager here at the Elections Group. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, the Elections Group is an election administration consulting firm. We partner with state and local election officials to implement new programs or implement processes for voters and stakeholders. We provide guidance, resources, and direct management support for jurisdictions. Our team is made up of former election officials and election experts from across the United States. We're pleased to have you all with us today for our third highlight of resources for the election administration community. Each week we will showcase resources from the elections group paired with resources from other organizations in the election space. Every four weeks, we will focus on a different, different topic and we'll take a deeper dive into the resources available each week. This month, we will focus on election administration and managing the elections process. And this week, we are highlighting the elections group's notice posters and the Center for Civic Design's Communicating Election and Post-Election Process Toolkit. Before we get into these awesome templates, we wanted to highlight some examples in the wild of election offices across the country who are doing some really amazing work. Today, we have Katie and Tim with the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota to talk about their polling place signage efforts and former collaboration with the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. So Katie and Tim, one thing that struck out to us about your signage was how crisp and clear everything is. The font is sans serif, the colors have a nice contrast. How did you all design these? So I guess I'll go first. I Back in 2013, when I first started, we had some initial conversations about how a lot of our polling place signage was all over the place. We had different design uh, designs floating around for different things, um, kind of a mismatch of things at the polling place. And so at the same time, um, MCAD had started serving as a polling location for us in the city. And um, being an art college, design college, um, they had already started creating a bunch of their own supplemental signage for wayfinding and for other things at the polling place. And so as we started thinking about looking around and how we were going to sort of streamline our design, we it was sort of a natural fit. We started talking to them. One of their staff had been a former Secretary of State employee. Uh, so she was well versed in elections and what we needed and what uh, would benefit everybody. And she also had connections with the Secretary of State's office still and knew that they were interested in redesigning the official signage from the state um, that was sent out to all the jurisdictions. So um, they have an in-house design uh, company that's run by students that does outside work. Um, and so they suggested, let's just partner with them. Uh, design Works is the name of their in-house design firm and and um, just to partner with them and, and they develop the signage and with our, with our input. They also utilized a lot of um, Design for Democracy, you might be familiar with, uh, with the American Institute of Graphic Arts. Uh, so they implemented the, the design with those guidelines in mind and came up with what you see on the screen. What positive wasn't... feedback did you get from um, having these this new signage throughout your polling places? Well, the state, uh, I mean, the state picked them up for you statewide, so that was a really positive development. Um, um, a lot of the, the poll workers themselves commented that how great it looks. It looks a lot cleaner, smoother, you know, easy to read, easy to digest. So I think it was well, well received immediately from the poll workers and from the level of the state administration as well. We work a lot at the cohesion, not just since the sign project of staying within theme and using the same language that is used, whether it's someone who's 
voting in person on election day and seeing these signs that the state has put out, but also for everyone who's voting early in our early vote center or who's participating by mail. So we try to keep that cohesion um, in design and in language going across all of those different platforms. It's something we've taken and we've translated into a lot of different languages. That's something that the state has picked up this year as well in through a legislative change and more requirements as far as um, offering these materials in different languages go. So that's kind of how it's progressed and how it's continuing forth um, since then. That's great to hear. And you sort of answered my next question, but what can we look forward to from your office in the future in terms of signage? Anything for the upcoming primary or general elections? Yeah, a lot of it's really focused around the having the materials in multiple languages, um, providing our um, ballots in different languages and um, just providing that extra service. But I'll let Tim speak because he does a lot, not just with the required signage, but with providing additional signage that's specific to each polling place. Yeah, I think we're just we're just adding, um, we're sort of enhancing our wayfinding, uh, especially in terms of out, I guess what would be outdoor signage in some cases, um, just ensuring that our, you know, pathways to accessible entrances are um, marking curbside voting for those who want to vote curbside that you can do um, that at the polling places, things like that, that we don't, we haven't quite beefed up as much as we can in terms of that sort of out, outdoor signage. A lot of the interior stuff is, is looking pretty good these days. And I, I should mention, I didn't say this, but the, the designs are available. Uh, that was our intention at the beginning, both ourselves and MCAT, the design college, uh, to make them available free for anyone who wants to use them through a Creative Commons license. So that's out there and available. Uh, people can contact us. I don't really know how many people have accessed. Uh, I know we've had some interest in the state, but I don't know if anybody's really discovered us yet. <laughs> if anybody's interested, they're welcome to take those. They can modify them you know, for their own uses. but. The basic designs are there and available. What's the best way to contact you all if someone's interested? Vote.minneapolismn.gov. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing um, and to Katie and Tim and the City of Minneapolis elections. Um, to talk more about our different resources in the elections community, we have with us today Emma Warawinski, the design lead and civic information designer for the Center for Civic Design. We're excited to have her today and we'll let her introduce herself and her organization. Hi everyone. Um, and I have a presentation to switch over to if we can do that as well. Um, teaser from that image. I have to say first that I didn't know those posters were available for other people to use. And I am a huge fan of the borrow and build off of philosophy. Um, and I can't wait to share that with people. The second I hear someone say they need a poster that looks like that, I'm going to be like, I know where you should go first. Um, so that was exciting for me to hear about too. <laughs> um, I am here with you all today to talk about um, the Communicating Election and Post-Election Processes Toolkit, which is quite a mouthful, but it's simpler than that title <laughs> says it is. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Emma, um, and I uh, work for the Center for Civic Design. At CCD, we believe that um, elections should work for everyone, and we work with election offices, um, democracy advocates and civic engagement organizations to make elections easier to run, to support innovation, and to invite participation in elections. Um, and today, the toolkit I'm talking about was made for and in collaboration with the U.S. Election Assistance Commission. So in 2021, the EAC asked us to create explanations of the ballot counting process for observers, campaigns, and the press. And this project was in response to the increased number of election observers in jurisdictions across the United States. Um, it was also in response to an increase in mis and disinformation about election processes experienced by all voters. 
And so when we got this ask, we were like, yes, absolutely. We absolutely want to be working on thinking about how to create resources to support election officials um, in these problems that they're experiencing. And the toolkit that we created is to make materials that provide trustworthy information to everyone because we know that all voters have questions, concerns, and fears about election processes, not just election observers. So this toolkit is designed to treat the post-election part of the process, what comes after election day, as part of the voting experience. Um, I think that we're collectively getting really, really good at designing for before voting and voting as an experience, but we don't do as much to support people thinking about what comes after election day and after they've filled out their ballot. Um, and I think post-2020 has forced us to take a closer look at how to support people in our communities through that part. So the materials that we design for in-person observers to navigate and understand mail, mail ballot processing and post-election day um, can also be used to provide trustworthy information to everyone, at election offices, on county and state websites, on social media, and by sharing them out with other organizations and the press. So everything about this toolkit is designed to increase trust in the system. It anticipates and addresses misinformation directly by framing around the facts. And we do that framing around the facts instead of using a myths versus facts framing, because when you restate a myth to counter it, you risk people accidentally mistaking that familiarity with the myth for validation that the myth is true. So we always frame with the truth and the accurate information. Um, it's written in plain language instead of a legal tone so that it's understandable. It mentions the checks and balances that happen at every step of an election from voter registration to ballot storage. And as, the, as we address people's fears through the information in this toolkit, we also wanted to bring some joy back into the writing um, as a way of reassuring people that all of these processes are, are normal and not something that should, should be a cause for alarm. Um, in our research, we saw that both observers and voters have a lack of context about elections. So an everyday voter's definition of an election does not necessarily map onto an election official's definition. Um, and for, for people, when you hear something new and you don't understand it, um, for example, like ballot duplication, you fill in the blanks yourself, often with misinformation. When we asked about what types of misinformation election officials were hearing in 2021, we heard stories about results, election timelines, the security and validity of mail ballots, and a lot of specific concerns that people heard from their election observers. A lot of the patterns in that misinformation boiled down to not understanding the broader system of how elections work. So these research insights told us that we need to design consistent information about the full election process that explains how all types of ballots, no matter how they are cast, go through the same eligibility and security procedures. At the same time, mistis and malinformation doesn't have vote borders. So voters are hearing stories from other states and other jurisdictions. What we found is it might be even better if the top level framing of the full election process is consistent across the United States by naming and defining consistent top level steps. That consistency of information and consistency of framework is one important tactic for fighting misinformation. And finally, the toolkit supports all of the differences between jurisdictions by being as customizable as possible, which I'm about to show you. So this toolkit includes written language, visual language of illustrations, and a huge array of design templates to explain election processes in 12 steps from voter registration to ballot storage. We designed signage at three levels for in-person observers, and we designed handouts with both print and digital applications for both voters and observers who want more information. Everything is based on the theory of bite snack meal, to give people the right amount of information in the right format at the right time, and to simultaneously direct them to additional information if they want it. We made them customizable for any size election office. The toolkit works for small election offices who might choose to use a larger poster to show the full process at the entrance to their space, 
have printed pocket guides and some wall signs for observers. And it works for larger offices who have warehouse style mail ballot counting facilities who might choose to use all of the toolkit elements, including larger posters, wall signs, overhead signs, handouts, and pocket guides. This poster of the full election process includes all 12 steps with a bite-sized amount of information for each. It thanks observers for participating in the civic process and tells them where to find more information. You may notice these bright color highlights in all of our templates. Those to indicate information that might change between jurisdictions, like laws and rules that observers are required to follow, election code, and where each step of the process is happening in the facility. That's so when you open up this toolkit, it's really easy for you to know what you need to change and edit before you can print out and use the materials. Posters like these help people find their way through both the process of the election and the physical space, so they know what's happening and also where they are in the facility. These are a couple of examples of the wall signs, which include a bite-sized amount of information about a single step. Like all of the templates, there are directions for where to find more information, either by asking an election official in this space, by going to the county website, or by reading the relevant election code. The signs include the context of the steps happening before and after. So for example, an election observer will know where a tray of ballots is going if it leaves the room, which is a huge pattern of misinformation we heard specifically happening with election observers in mail ballot processing spaces. The illustrations are not literal the way that an illustration on a bad ballot literally shows how to fill out the ballot, but instead gesture at the concept of what happens during that step. That's because we know that every jurisdiction looks different and has different equipment that they use, even though the step that they're doing at that, the step and the concept of what's happening are the same across jurisdictions. The design files are built out in black and white, and the toolkit includes instructions on how to use color effectively and cost effectively. Um, we know that a lot of jurisdictions already use color in their mail ballot processes, and we recommend matching that color coding consistently so people, again, have a sense of where they are in the process when they're observing. Lastly, this is the pocket guide that we have in the toolkit that includes all of the same information as that large process poster that I just showed you, but fit on a letter-sized piece of paper. Election offices might choose um, to make an election specific version of this that they can hand to observers along with the list of rules that observers are expected to follow in a space, but might also choose to make an evergreen version that can be handed out to voters all year round as another piece of voter education. You can get started using this resource by going to the Election Assistance Commission's website or by scanning this helpful QR code um, on the right of this screen. Um, and I do wanna make a plug, the EAC made a wonderful series of resource videos that walk you through how to use this toolkit step-by-step. Step. So there's both written instructions and visual instructions for um, learning how to use it. And last, uh, I also wanted to add that uh, CCD has a lot of other resources that we have on our website, um, including our field guides, lots of other templates, um, research and best practices for running elections that you can um, find through these links. And if you have any questions for me about this toolkit, which I hope you don't, I hope we designed it so well that you don't have any questions about how to use it. Um, if you do have questions, uh, you can contact us with that email address on the right. And that's all I have. Thank you guys for listening. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Emma. All right. So quickly, we will go over our next resource. Um, so unexpected situations will come up and being prepared to communicate any necessary changes is key to a success successful election. The templates created by the elections group notify voters of changes or delays that they may need to be aware of on or leading up to election day. These templates can be downloaded from our website in both PDF and PowerPoint format, and Annie will include the links in the chat. Election offices can customize these templates for their use using their own logo, branding, and polling place information. There's even a page of graphics included on the last page of the resource that y'all can use. 
These templates can also be used at early voting centers, at elections HQs, or on your election office's website and social media pages to keep voters aware of what's going on across your jurisdiction. We encourage election officials to download and customize these templates ahead of each election so that you are prepared when unexpected changes take place. Great, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you to Rebecca, Emma, Katie, and Tim for such a great discussion. The resources mentioned in today's discussion have been placed into the chat, but as always, our inbox is open. If you have any additional questions, please email us at support at electionsgroup.com. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day.